Welcome to our channel. Today, we delve into the realm of narcissistic abuse and recovery. This is a term that has gained significant attention over the past few years. But what exactly does it mean? In essence, narcissistic abuse is a form of psychological and emotional maltreatment perpetrated by individuals who exhibit patterns of behavior consistent with narcissistic personality disorder, or NPD. This is not your everyday selfishness. We're talking about a deep-seated sense of superiority, a craving for admiration and a disregard for others' feelings and experiences. Now, you may be wondering what this abuse looks like in the context of relationships. It's often subtle, insidious, and can easily be mistaken for intense passion or deep concern. The abuser may use tactics like gaslighting, a form of manipulation where they cause you to question your own sanity, memory or perception. They may also exhibit controlling behavior, dictating every aspect of your life from what you wear to who you spend time with. Narcissistic abuse doesn't stop at emotional manipulation though. It can also manifest in the form of excessive criticism, public humiliation and the constant undermining of your self-esteem and self-worth. The goal is to make you feel small, insignificant, and dependent on them for validation. This type of abuse isn't limited to romantic relationships either. It can occur in familial relationships, friendships, and even in the workplace. The key is to recognize these patterns for what they are, not reflections of your worth, but rather manifestations of a disorder that drives the abuser to exploit others for their own gain. Recognizing narcissistic abuse is the first step towards recovery. After escaping a narcissistic relationship, the journey to recovery begins. The aftermath of narcissistic abuse can leave deep, lasting wounds. It's important to understand the long-term effects to navigate the healing process effectively. Survivors often grapple with mental health issues such as depression and anxiety. These are common reactions to the psychological and emotional manipulation that characterizes narcissistic abuse. The abuser's constant criticism and invalidation can lead to a chronic state of fear and self-doubt, resulting in an anxiety disorder. Depression, on the other hand, might stem from the feelings of hopelessness and worthlessness that the abuser instills in their victims. Post-traumatic stress disorder, or PTSD, is another serious effect of narcissistic abuse. Survivors might experience flashbacks of the abuse, nightmares, or severe anxiety. This condition can be debilitating, making it difficult for survivors to function in their daily lives. In addition to these mental health issues, survivors of narcissistic abuse often struggle with self-esteem and trust issues. The narcissistic abuser's pattern of belittling and gaslighting can shatter the victim's self-image, leading to a deep-seated belief that they are inadequate or unworthy. Trust issues arise when the person who is supposed to love and respect you becomes the source of your pain and fear. This betrayal can make it hard for survivors to trust others, and even themselves. However, it's important to remember that while these effects are serious, they are not permanent. With time, patience and the right support, survivors can heal from these wounds and rebuild their lives. They can regain their self-esteem, learn to trust again, and overcome the mental health issues resulting from the abuse. The road to recovery may be long and challenging, but it is not impossible. Remember, healing is not a linear process, there will be setbacks and difficult days, but every step forward, no matter how small, is a victory. You're not alone in this journey, and there is hope for a brighter, healthier future. If you're finding this video helpful and would like to learn more about narcissists, consider subscribing to our channel. We've got a wealth of content coming up that you won't want to miss. We'll delve deeper into the long-term effects of narcissistic abuse, explore steps towards recovery, and discuss how to support survivors in their journey. Our upcoming series will shed light on the many facets of narcissism and its impact, providing the knowledge and tools you need to heal and thrive. Join us as we continue to explore and understand the complexities of narcissists. Recovering from narcissistic abuse involves a series of steps. Each step is an essential part of the healing process, and it's important to remember that recovery isn't linear. 
You might find yourself moving back and forth between the steps, and that's okay. It's all part of the journey towards healing. The first step towards recovery is acknowledging the abuse. It's often a difficult and painful process to come to terms with the fact that you've been a victim of narcissistic abuse. However, it's an essential step towards healing. Recognizing the signs of abuse, such as gaslighting, manipulation, and controlling behavior, can validate your experiences and help you understand that what you went through wasn't your fault. The next step is engaging in physical activity. It might seem unrelated, but physical exercise can be a powerful tool in releasing trauma and reducing stress. Activities like yoga, swimming, or even just taking a walk can help you reconnect with your body and provide a healthy outlet for any pent-up emotions. Seeking professional help is another crucial step in the recovery process. Therapists and counselors who specialize in trauma and abuse can provide you with the tools and strategies you need to heal. They can help you navigate through your feelings, understand the impact of the abuse, and guide you towards a healthier future. Joining a support group can also be incredibly beneficial. It allows you to connect with others who have gone through similar experiences. Sharing your story and hearing others can be therapeutic, and it's comforting to know that you're not alone in your journey towards recovery. Reconnecting with supportive friends and family is equally important. Surrounding yourself with people who love and support you can provide a sense of security and belonging. They can help you rebuild your self-esteem and remind you of your worth. Remember, healing is a process that takes time. Be patient with yourself. It's okay to have moments of doubt or to feel overwhelmed. It's okay to take one step at a time. You're on a journey towards healing, and every step you take, no matter how small, is a step in the right direction. If you know someone recovering from narcissistic abuse, your support can make a significant difference. Being there for a survivor involves more than just being physically present. It's about creating a safe space where they feel validated and heard. Imagine a space where judgment is left at the door. A space where a survivor can recount their experiences without fear of ridicule or dismissal. This is the kind of environment you want to cultivate. Being non-judgmental is pivotal. It's not about providing answers or solutions, but about allowing the survivor to process their experiences in their own time and way. Listening, truly listening, is another cornerstone of supporting a survivor. This means not just hearing the words that are spoken, but also understanding the emotions behind them. It's about acknowledging their feelings and reassuring them that it's okay to feel the way they do. Empathetic listening can be a powerful tool for healing. One crucial aspect that we must not overlook is the potential for thoughts of self-harm. Narcissistic abuse can leave deep emotional wounds, and it's imperative to take any mention of self-harm seriously. If a survivor expresses such thoughts, it's important to encourage them to seek professional help immediately. Your role is not to act as a therapist, but as a supportive friend or family member who can guide them towards getting the help they need. In the end, it's about understanding that recovery is a journey. It's a path that is unique to each survivor and one that they must navigate in their own way. Your role as a supporter is to walk alongside them, providing comfort and encouragement when they need it most. Your understanding and empathy can be a beacon of hope for a survivor. Recovery from narcissistic abuse is a journey of healing and rediscovery. It's a process that requires patience, determination, and a lot of self-care. We've covered a lot of ground today, and we hope that the insights shared have shed light on a subject that's often misunderstood or overlooked. We began by understanding what narcissistic abuse looks like, the gaslighting, the controlling behavior, the systematic undermining of your self-esteem. It's crucial to recognize these signs, not just for yourself, but also for those around you who might be experiencing the same. We then delved into the aftermath of such abuse. The long-term effects can be profound, impacting mental health, self-perception, and relationships. But it's important to remember that while the scars may run deep, they don't define you. You are not the abuse you endured. In our journey towards recovery, we explored various strategies from acknowledging the abuse, engaging in physical activities to release trauma, to reconnecting with support systems. 
Therapy and support groups can provide tremendous help, offering a safe space to share experiences and learn from others who are on the same path. And let's not forget the role of supportive individuals in this journey. If you're helping someone recover from narcissistic abuse, remember to be patient, non-judgmental, and empathetic. Provide a safe space for them to express their feelings and take their thoughts seriously, especially those concerning self-harm. Recovering from narcissistic abuse is not a journey one should walk alone. It's a collective effort that involves the survivor, their support system, and professional help. Remember, each step you take towards recovery, no matter how small, is a step towards reclaiming your life, your identity, and your self-worth. As we wrap up, we invite you to join the conversation. We'd love to hear from you. Which strategies will you work on first in your recovery journey? Please share in the comments below. Your insights could be the beacon of hope someone else needs.